Okay, good. So this morning, while the coffee is making some effect into our systems, uh, we try to um, say complete the exercise that we started uh, on, on Tuesday um, about planning the need finding for our uh, toy project hmm? or our example project. And uh, uh, last time we had a discussion about uh, what kind of observation we could do in this context. Okay, so in, for example, we, we discovered that uh, the ideal form of observation, so observing users in their natural environment is not really applicable here because it's something that happens only once a year and we cannot probably afford you know, to wait until then. And so probably you know, we would have chosen to do a laboratory observer, uh, observation you know, where we invite people in and make them play out uh, the dynamics. Hmm? So um, it's not, you, you are not always in the position of choosing the best technique. Uh, <laughs> you should choose uh, the best uh, applicable technique, of course, for, for your specific case. Hmm? Um, about uh, the next step would be to go uh, deeper and making some, some interviews. Um, we already discussed, uh, for example, which uh, users should, should we, we should select, uh, should we select uh, as a target for these interviews. Mm -hmm. So always remember, we have a limited budget of time, so we have a limited budget of, uh, limited number uh, of interviews that we can afford to make, and so let's try to make every one of them count, okay? Uh, so trying to ideally cover with your, let's say, set of uh, uh, target uh, users, uh, the same groups that you defined at the beginning when you studied uh, the, the group composition. So that's why, remember, at the beginning, we, uh, we were quite, uh, where is that, yeah. Uh, quite generous in thinking about what kind of groups or subgroups we have uh, of users, uh, but then we try to be more cautious, more uh, aware that some groups are more important than others, and the, those that are more important are the ones that we are spending our, uh, our resources later on, okay? Uh, so we always try to, to balance. Uh, the more narrow or, well, or more well-defined uh, your target group is, uh, the better it is because you don't have to, to do uh, say hard decisions of uh, uh, taking um, some users into account or, or not. Hmm? Um, this is especially true in the, in the project of the course uh, where maybe you realize that your, the, the, the activity you're observing involves different kinds of people maybe with quite different roles, and you might decide to focus only on one of them, okay? Uh, so as long as it's an uh, explicit decision, okay, we know that uh, the, the set of users or a set of stakeholders is much wider, but in this project, uh, in, in, in the time we have for working on the project, we will focus only on one of them. So it's better to, let's say, reach the end of one, only one group, and we know, okay, our, prototype at the end will be incomplete overall because we, it will not cover what another user will do. And maybe that other user is important to complete the workflow, okay? But at least we have for one user, all, all of its uh, um, activities are, are covered well. So don't be afraid of letting out something in order to be able to have a, a well-defined problem to work on. Okay. Um, so we mentioned as much as possible, if uh, resources permit, uh, let's do one-to-one -one interviews. Uh, they are also simpler to manage uh, and uh, uh, basically uh, faster. And uh, how can we structure the interview and uh, which questions should we ask? Hmm? So uh, the general guidelines uh, tell us that uh, uh, the interviews uh, more or less all have the same structure where the next uh, let me pick up also this file because it turned out useful uh, the structure on the interview um, 
you know, at the high level, uh, you have uh, probably, let me say, four sections, okay? The first section is the introduction. Why are we here? And uh, uh, so you explain to them what you are expecting. Uh, how much time, no? okay, this interview is expected to take 10 minutes, uh, for example, or 20 minutes. Uh, uh, it's about uh, uh, a feature, um, an idea, no? a project idea on something. Uh, we are not testing you. You, we are, you are helping, something like that. Okay, explain the role. Okay, we are not uh, interviewing them for marketing purposes, nor for statistical reasons. Okay, uh, you are helping us. And uh, probably most important, it's better to say that there are no wrong answers. So it's not a quiz, it's not a test. These are open questions, and every answer you give, by definition, is right, because it's your, uh, uh, your opinion or your feeling. Uh, it may seem obvious to us, because we know what we are doing, but it's not normal. It's not, uh, you know, uh, the, the interviews or the tests that you take normally are not of this kind. Usually, they are for assessing some statistics, uh, some uh, you know, trends, uh, some opinions and so on, okay? Or during the exams for checking your knowledge, okay? This is neither of the two. It's just something for uh, extracting your knowledge, your needs or desires, or something like that. So uh, we should prepare a text, an introduction text that we can read if you want to read or just explain, but just uh, write it down so you don't uh, forget anything important. So you are, you are, I think the two most important pieces of information we should never forget is how much time are we going to take and uh, there are no wrong answers. Okay. So I feel free to speak and I promise I won't steal you more than this time. Okay. And uh, so you explain that and then probably you explain how it, how it works. Okay. So, um, how it works. So you should explain, uh, for example, I, I will ask questions, so you, you reply, huh? and then I will move on to the next question, for example. Hmm? Or another method will be, I will ask questions, and then upon your reply, we can have a little discussion for every question. So you may decide to have a little discussion for a question, or, or uh, say, move the discussion to the end. So I say, okay, we'll ask a, a series of questions and then we'll stop a moment for having a discussion, free for a free discussion, something like that, okay? Uh, or try to be uh, synthetic in your responses or try to elaborate on your responses to different, you give you should give instructions of what kind of responses or what kind of interaction, okay, you are, uh, you are um, expecting. Like, uh, you know, when you go to class uh, or to a conference and the speaker will say, okay, I will take questions at the end. Uh, it's their choice. It's the protocol to say, okay, uh, first I, I speak and then I will stop uh, for uh, getting questions. Uh, other people will say, interrupt me anytime. Hmm? So uh, as long as we know <laughs> how to behave, it's okay. Huh? Uh, but it's important to be explicit. Hmm? Again. Um, Okay, so this is the, the uh, initial setting, just to have a, a common ground. Hmm? Probably it's a uh, half a page uh, that you write uh, and you can read to them, hmm? or so have, it, have it in front of you while you're explaining if you don't, don't want to, to, if you don't want to read it because it feels, uh, say, you are being not too interested uh, or too, too, too detached, but anyway. And uh, finally, uh, they should ask for permission to, to share uh, their responses, share or, uh, say, elaborate 
the responses, and uh, uh, maybe the recordings. So these are important steps. If we are taking notes, or better, if we are recording what they say, they should give uh, explicit permission to us uh, to use these recordings in our studies. Hmm? Especially if you are video recording, but also audio recording. But in general, okay, be explicit about uh, what uh, happens to what they say. Okay, it's not uh, anything you're saying can be used against you in court. <laughs> it's uh, uh, everything you say can be used by us to improve our product. Uh, you're not going to ask our the royalties later on or whatever. Okay, no, 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 not let's not go to the, to the uh, business issues, but uh, at least uh, be explicit about uh, uh, what they the usage you expect for, for our, from that information. Huh? So they, that also, in some context, may also mean that okay, if there is any, any inf um, confidential information, please say that. Okay, either avoid to provide uh, confidential information, or just tell me, okay, this piece is confidential, so please don't use it. Don't use the information that last year I went to my boss 27 times because nothing were, was ever working, for example. Okay, so I'm telling you in, in confidence, uh, but please don't report it. So just to learn, yes, you, what, do you have a question? In the case of, of uh, um, video recordings or audio recordings, uh, yes. Uh, if you are processing this, this video recording, if you are just storing it somewhere, uh, and say, for example, if you're just recording on a, they don't exist anymore, on a cassette tape, for example, uh, you just, mm, it's just enough that they, um, you record their agreement uh, on the same tape, okay? But if you are then storing it somewhere, you know, just uh, putting it on Google Drive or whatever, then you are uh, legally distributing the same file. So the, the, the content will move from the place where it was recorded to another system. That may be may also be accessed by other people. So in that case, it's better to have a, a piece of paper or a recorded declaration. Okay, as long as it's uh, on file somewhere, it may be on paper, it may be just uh, uh, as a voice recording, hmm? or, the, or, the, or a form they fill uh, or whatever. Hmm? Having a, a, a place where you can prove uh, they they get their, their consent. Hmm? Yeah. Okay, so this is something from your side. They will listen. Maybe they ask clarifications, and then you can start. Hmm? Uh, you can start with the normal questions, which will come today uh, later to, to some example. We can construct some, uh, some examples. And these questions will depend probably on the type of users. Some, some are, uh, are the same for everybody. Some depend on the, on the user. Uh, not on the specific individual user, but of the, on the group to which this user belongs. Hmm? Um, and that's, again, one of the reasons why we need first to think well about uh, the user groups and the type of uh, individuals we are interviewing. Okay. Uh, okay. We'll, we'll come to the specific example of questions in the next slide. And, uh, but, question let's say uh, about let's say about the topic. Hmm? There's a, a topic we are being researching, and then we can ask questions about the user. Okay. So there may be. <clears throat> Simple questions, or say, an graphic question. I don't know if it's a word in English, uh, like uh, age, like uh, where you live, uh, country, or uh, maybe gender, if you want, uh, and so on. Uh, profession, the level of skills. So skills about okay, are you skilled or? Let's not ask it so directly, but uh, 
um, how do you feel working with smartphone, for example? Hmm? Uh, I, for, of course, I wouldn't ask it to uh, an 18 year old guy or girl, of course, they, I assume that they are familiar with smartphone, but maybe if you had uh, um, a 17 years old person, I, I need to understand uh, for the, their level of, uh, of skill and competence in using some computer system or some smartphone some technology that we are planning to use, for example, or the skills on their job. Okay, if the, our project was uh, uh, about uh, um, onboarding in uh, student teams, uh, so I'm interviewing a team leader, and so one important question would be, uh, how long have you been a team leader? So how many onboarding processes did you manage in your life uh, or in your, while being your, in this team or maybe in other teams. So what is this, your experience on the job? Job in a white sense. Hmm? Uh, because it, it can be useful okay, to, to wait in a way the answers. There will be some opinions, okay. Uh, a novice may think usually that stuff is much easier than it really is. Okay, it should be, it should be, no, I don't, I don't foresee any big problems. An experienced person probably already have a, li a long list of problems that happened without them uh, expecting them, without them expecting them. Hmm? So, uh, skills uh, on, uh, let's say, ICT, for sure, technologies, and skills uh, on the domain, on the application domain, hmm? on the job. As we said before. Um, so, in order for us to be able to better interpret this, uh, and we always ask questions about the user after the discussion about the topic, about the domain, always. Okay, so we are not. Otherwise, it will be very rude uh, for starting for the questions. Uh, uh, how old are you? Uh, okay, I can tell you or not, but uh, let's not start this conversation in this way. Okay. Um, it looks like you are trying to steal some data from them or you are minding their own business, okay? No, uh, let's be clear that the, our main interest is on discussing the topic, the domain, something in which they are experts, they, are the, they know more than me. Hmm? And at the end, just for say, completing the, the survey, just please, can you give me some basic information about you? Basic information means, uh, as we already mentioned, uh, should be, let's say, not, it doesn't need to be precise. So you don't need to, me, to tell me exactly your age. Just maybe in ranges, 10 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, or something like that. And only if it's really needed. So, uh, in our case, no, the student teams, do we care about the ages? I don't know. Uh, they are all between 19 and 24. Does it make a difference whether you are 20 or 23 for the purpose of this project? I, I don't see why. How it could, be, it could make a difference? Hmm? So this, it's some information I already have, and I really, the details, I don't really care. No? So in this case, I would not ask for that. Hmm? In other cases, it may, may be relevant. Maybe it's more interesting, like we did when we analyzed the user group, to know if they are bachelors or masters, for example, and in which degree they are enrolled. Huh? So maybe we can understand, uh, I don't know, if they are from uh, Architecture, for example, if we stay inside the Polytechnic, they will probably have a different approach than somebody from engineering. Maybe in the first year, more or less, they think the same. They think as late teenagers. Uh, but after three or four years where you have been you know, brainwashed with a given way of thinking, you start uh, reacting differently. Hmm? So they may be, in this case, may be more interesting. So maybe more uh, the degree in which they are enrolled is 
more important than a specific age, for example. Uh, country, do we need, do we really need uh, in the, our specific case uh, to know whether they are from one country or another, or we just need some uh, broader information like uh, are you an Italian student and inter or an international student? And maybe if you are an international student, uh, what makes, may make a difference is whether you are a time-limited international student, so visiting for one year, one semester, whatever, or you are just staying here. So I know some people just do all their say, studies here from the bachelor to the master. So formally they are, let's say, international students, uh, but practically they live here and they do all this, this study here. So uh, they don't have some extra timing constraints as the visiting students do have. So probably this is more important than the specific country they are from. in order for us to understand the relationship with the teamwork, uh, with the student teamwork. Because let's not forget. So we don't have to follow, let's say, a, um, a set of questions or, uh, which is always the same. We should try to customize them to, uh, and ask ourselves, what is the more important information, the most important possibly, but <laughs> even something which is, we feel it's important for our understanding of their relationship with the domain, with the student team. So in this case, I, I would refrain from asking this question, not because it's something to be ashamed of, okay? It's just not needed. And again, we try to shrink the budget. Okay, we have a limited amount of time, 20 minutes, and so we may ask only so many questions. And we try to select those questions that give us more information. Hmm? Uh, so for example, instead of, of country, I, I would say that uh, uh, whether they are international students and or with kind, kind, let's say, kind of. And let's forget about country, we don't need it at the moment. Uh, uh, probably also the gender which is relevant. So there are, there are many easy questions to ask, and usually the easiest are the less useful ones. The first one that came to your mind, age and gender and country, <laughs> usually, are so generic that are ra rarely useful. So that's uh, why we cannot have a, you know, a standard interview template. Because the questions that, that count, that matter, are different in every case. Um, okay, of course, the skills are probably always important because you need to understand how they relate with the technology, how they relate with the domain, and uh, in different forms they are probably. A profession also is useless because by definition they are students. Hmm? We may ask, uh, yeah, uh, declination of the profession is the role in the team. Did you have or had you in the past uh, some uh, managing role in the student team? Or mm, if independently, uh, w in which area of the team did you work? In, you know, communication, in uh, events uh, in technology, in challenges, and so on. Huh? There are very different roles. Huh? Uh, for example, the, I remember I was a bit shocked, uh, but of course uh, uh, I didn't think about it before. And uh, the team uh, with the with the bike, you know, the polycumbent uh, it's called, where they are building the fastest bike, and uh, and they are students building the bike, and then they are they have athletes. The train, you know, as, uh, as physically you know, for, say, pedaling that bike. And it's also a part of a role uh, inside that te their team, okay? Uh, maybe this one is better if they don't come from engineering, they come from, uh, you know, the, uh, um, I don't know, uh, how, how to say that in English, the, the university where they're doing you know, physical stuff, physical sciences, and so on. But 
So there are very strange roles, maybe you don't think about them, and you understand these people are playing huh? uh, these roles in the team. And that could be interesting. Okay, it's also better for them, okay, uh, we are not uh, um, checking them or querying them. Tell me your age. Huh? Tell me where you live. No, it's more tell me how do you relate with the project. So it's information about you, but that part of you, that facet of you, that is interesting to the domain. So they, are, they will be more willing to respond, also to elaborate the response. Uh, also, another point here, when I uh, deleted the, uh, the country, um, we will see it better on the general uh, question, but uh, in general, try also to avoid, it was one of the guidelines, uh, avoid direct answers, direct questions with direct answers. Which country are you from? Italy. So it's, it's fast, but it doesn't give a lot of information. Uh, what kind of international student are you? Okay, the answer can be, no, I'm just an Italian student, nothing special, nothing fancy. Or, oh, I'm in Erasmus, I'm here from two years. I've been in Germany before, and I went back to India afterwards, or whatever. They will tell you something. The question is more open. It's open to telling me your story. I don't need uh, to tick a box, international, yes or no. Yes, okay, I can also tick a box, uh, but probably the number of boxes is much larger, or possible boxes is much larger than you think. So let's open for discussion, okay? Again, the, role, the, uh, the, the goal is not making uh, statistics. Hmm? And so I mentioned there are four main part of the interview, uh, the final one is the thank you phase. Okay, so of course, the thank there for, for their time, for their willingness to share information. Maybe you remind them that you, are will, you will use this information in, the, in your research or product research. If possible, you leave them a little gift. Okay, it may be just, uh, you know, one cookie or one chocolate, but it's just a symbol, okay? You care about uh, uh, their time. Um, uh, and you can probably let them know if they, did, they want or if they need to tell you something more, something more comes into their mind, uh, how they can contact you later on. Okay, they will not probably, hmm? but uh, at least you, if, uh, you pretend you care uh, about them, say, okay, if you have something more to tell me, uh, you, can, you can give me contact, uh, say future uh, contact, contact information for later on. Hmm? So I sort of a wrap up question, wrap up session, okay. Um, just to say, okay, it's finished here, we thank you, and we will use the information. In some cases, uh, but probably need finding it happens very rarely, uh, you may ask them, do, are you interested in the results of the study? Hmm? Uh, in many surveys, that you can tick whether you want to receive the final report or not. In this case, is quite uh, not so useful because we, will, we won't have a systematic report at the end. Okay, uh, basically all, all interviews are more or less the same, where the, the big part, of course, is uh, asking the specific question. Okay, and these actually need to be, you, we, we remember the guidelines, ask open questions, don't ask for leading questions, uh, uh, give space for discussion and so on. So let's try to write some of these questions, actually. Okay, um, and we remember The, it depends on the type of user, right? So uh, there are, okay, we may mark some of the question, okay, only for some group of users, uh, only for the leaders or only for the new, uh, new entries and so on, okay? A uh, question we, we should try to go from wide to narrow. So first asking general questions and right, then trying to ask more specific ones, okay? 
remember um, we are talking about the onboarding process but maybe onboarding is a term that we are created in our own project is how we call the, the thing they may not call it in this way they may not even be aware that there was a process okay where they're being welcomed to, to the new team so always try to use uh, in, the, in our questions or we always try to use the language of the user okay one very important guideline let's not use some, some words or some keywords or some concepts uh, that we have been laboring on them we have been studying them so we made our own jargon in our project but it doesn't need to be the same jargon of the user so let's use the user jargon and not uh, our own jargon okay um, so one you know, opening question may be tell me about okay uh, okay so tell me about uh, the team the student team you are in I'm not asking specifically maybe about the onboarding process yet, but as to get some, maybe this information is useless for me, okay? They will tell me general stuff, or we love to go to challenges or whatever, but at least it's to, okay, to tell them we are talking about this topic. So everything that will follow will be within the, the, the topic that we set with the first question, okay? I'm not asking directly, uh, how did you feel when the, the, you first met the team leader? Maybe I come to that later. But not as a, as a first question, because it's too specific. Okay? In your mind, you may be thinking about anything else. So let's first spend one minute <laughs> or, okay, in getting to discuss about a specific topic. Huh? This is a very open question. You may have a student that will or they respond, uh, yeah, it's fine. And then maybe you should push them, say, tell, tell you more. Yes. You like it? What do you like it more? Or something like that, just to get some information. Some other student will start talking and you need to stop them. Okay, that's interesting. Let's move on to the next question. So you don't want to spend all the 20 minutes on the first question. Okay? So you have, you have in a way to manage that and there is no no a rule okay just follow the user and try to make them comfortable but also to keep you with your schedule at the end uh, you should be able to ask the question you plan hmm? um, and so this could be a, a very first open question and then we can you know, move to the actual onboarding process uh, maybe it was long in the past, so maybe something like, do you remember when you first met uh, the team members? Hmm? Uh, so, from the team, we try to focus in, in the actual first stages. I, I try not to use uh, the word onboarding or joining or something that may have a specific meaning to me that may be interpreted differently. So I try to write, the, you first met uh, the other guys. Maybe you can think about, it's important to, to try to work uh, correctly on the words uh, that define the concept that we know, that we want to define uh, without using no, uh, words for which uh, there is no commonly shared knowledge yet. Hmm? So if there is some technical term, we use it. No? If I were to ask when you enrolled uh, to the Polytechnic or to computer engineering. So enrolling is a specific phase. Uh, everybody knows what it is because you sign for it and so on. So you can, we can use the precise term because it's already shared. We know that we mean the same with these words. 
but if, if you don't have a shared, uh, say, vocabulary yet, uh, we try to use a generic one, a general one, or to explain what we mean, what we mean, okay? Um, and this can be a question for everyone. Even the team leader, once he was a new entry. But then, so this question can be for, for everybody. But then maybe for team leaders and for new entries, uh, we make, at this point, uh, if we go into further details, uh, we can go into more. Uh, so, for example, for team leaders, let's say TL, okay, just to be sure. So for a team leader, I would ask, uh, how do, did you manage the, the welcoming process or meeting, or maybe we can, we can reuse it, meeting with new members. How do you manage or organize the meeting of new members? Hmm? So I'm giving them some responsibility. I'm recognizing the responsibility and please tell me how you do it. There's no right way of doing that. Okay, this again is a quite open question. Then I should probably in the discussion ask for clarification question. Okay, but what are the, the different stages? Do you always ha have a party or uh, does it happen every year? Or it may it happen at different times of the year? How many new people are there every time in, in average? Do they come one by one or do they come in blocks? Is anybody helping you? Okay, so maybe some of these questions I already can write them. Just to remind, to remind me, okay. But uh, uh, depending on how the, the conversation goes, I will ask some questions or others. So we need to be flexible here, okay, in the interaction. At the end, uh, we should try to make in our mind uh, to understand the process, okay. I won't use the word the process here because maybe they don't think they have a process. They, do, that they just do steps as they always did. Okay, every year we, we have a welcome party. Every year we have a speech uh, by our leader. Uh, we let them present, introduce themselves just because we already did. When I was, uh, when I enrolled as a new member, we did this, and so now I am a team leader, I'm still doing that. Oh. So, habits. Habits are sort of processes that repeat themselves, but they are not formalized. So we shouldn't ask, uh, do you have a formalized process for onboarding new people, new students? Because maybe they don't. Or they're not aware that uh, there's a process. But actually they have a habit, and they will tell you about the habit. That is the same as the process, basically. Okay? The important point that they keep repeating, because they feel they are important. Okay? So, of course, we need, uh, if we are trying to build some, some project, uh, we need in some way to formalize the steps. But it will be our job to solidify, to crystallize uh, some specific steps uh, from some habits or behaviors uh, that we can we observe, we consider and say, okay, so I saw that the different teams uh, always do this step. So let's focus on this step. Let's try to support this step in our application. Maybe it's not an explicit step for, step for them, but we recognize it may be useful. Um, and uh, for example, the same question to a new member can be different. Okay, how did the team welcome you the first time when you first met them? Or maybe welcome is already, already thinking about a specific moment. Uh, how did you, uh, how did, uh, say, you first, uh, 
okay, no, I'll say, what happened? Uh, when you were just joining the group, what is that? You know, a detail about uh, your previous question. Okay, tell me the process you went through. I'm asking about the process without asking about the process. Okay. Uh, and they may, they maybe they reply, "Oh, I was just thrown in. They gave me some uh, algorithm to write." Uh, and uh, because they have a specific role, it may happen. Or maybe we am. So we can, uh, that's why I, I, I was about to write the, the, the word uh, welcome, but then I refrain from that because maybe there, there is no welcome in some cases. Probably I wouldn't like to work with them, but. And so from this, uh, we have. Uh, some way uh, to understand the different kind of activities. Okay, I, I won't use the word process anymore. Activities, so uh, for, for getting to know, for the, remember, yeah, uh, some times like ago, we talked about the activities. So there was the training, there was the socialization, there were, the, no, we are already have all of them written in the slide. So we try to make them appear in their, uh, in the responses, in the discussion. Okay, so if we want, we can uh, we can have some specific questions. Okay, uh, now we are more in detail, so we may ask uh, um, were there any socialization socialization activities? Let's change the question. Where there, sorry, where there is just a, a question with a yes no answer. We should try to avoid writing questions where the answer can be yes, okay, or no. So um, the uh, can you tell me? About any socialization activities in the beginning? For example, okay, and that could be uh, an important. Uh, uh, what kind of training uh, did you have? Of course, these are all for the new. Sorry, for the new students. Okay, we may ask the same kind of question to the team leaders. Of course, by phrasing them differently. Okay, what kind of socialization activity did you organize? What kind of training did you organize? Did you give, and so on? Uh, another interesting question to ask, maybe to the first of the team leaders, is uh, uh, about the groups, not the subgroups. You say we, we mentioned that most teams have are divided in subgroups. So. Uh, how do you sign new members to the subgroups? This is a question more for, for the leaders. Okay. Maybe they, they reply, okay, the student choose. So basically, they let the student choose. Or in many cases, they say, okay, but uh, it depends on the on the interview, or what they say, what, of course, the, what are the preferences, but also the skills, uh, but also the criticality of the different areas. So I will propose them some roles, or let them choose among uh, different roles, or whatever they have. So that was one important point beforehand. And I think, I think we can get more information about this from the team leaders than from the new users. But from the new users, we, we may have the other point of view, like uh, were you were or are you happy with the role you are playing 
in the team. Uh, I was about to write, uh, were you happy with the role you were assigned in the team? Hmm? But uh, let's try to be more generic. Maybe they don't feel somebody assigned some role. They feel they, they chosen it. They feel they earned it or so uh, I, uh, if I uh, use the word here, assigning, I was, let's say, assuming that there was an assignment process. Maybe there isn't. Hmm? If it is, they will tell me. Yes, I was given this role three years ago. I don't really like it, or I, at the beginning I didn't, really, but then. Or I'm still fighting for moving uh, uh, because they want to move to another sub-team, but there are, there are already two people there. And so I'm, I'm helping in this role, which is not uh, what I like best or whatever. So here, uh, what we should listen no, in the different replies to these questions is uh, whether we can feel there are some parts uh, where, they feel, where, where, where we can spot a problem, hmm? a difficulty. Uh, the other question, uh, speaking about difficulties, we always have difficulties about uh, communication. In every team, in every activities, I always hear, hear the same phrase, uh, yes, but communication is hard, it's difficult, uh, doesn't work so well. Huh? Okay. I still have to, to meet one reality in which uh, the main problem people, uh, let's say, tell me is uh, communication or in circulation of information or whatever. So one question for everybody could be, uh, how do you handle, uh, ha handle communications in the first steps, in the first uh, steps? So I'm not interested in how communication works today. I only, I'm mostly interested in how communication went uh, at the beginning. So for example here, I could point to uh, shared repositories of information, uh, uh, mail list, uh, groups, or whatever. So I'm being setting up uh, as a communication I'm say, as a new student, I'm entering some existing communication structure, so I need to understand what is there and how to use it, uh, some rules or whatever. Did they explain me? Did they just put, put me in the, in the WhatsApp group and? Uh, and they don't know who's speaking, or what roles they have, and so on. We are probing. We are probing different aspects. The, the, the activity that we mentioned before, maybe we didn't write that. Uh, assign your responsibilities, socialization opportunities, interviews, uh, skills, and so on. Um, linking with the current components, uh, sharing knowledge. These were the problems, uh, the issues that we thought were relevant to our project at the beginning. And here, in some way, we are trying to ask questions, or questions whose answer can help us understand, uh, first, uh, whether any of those uh, are really problems, are really issues. How much felt they are as an issue. Maybe they, they don't feel it's a problem. Okay, so we checked and we know that there's not a problem, so we don't need to invest more, uh, much more. It already works well as it is. There may be cases where people feel it'll work, it'll, uh, it works well, but we, see, we can see longer and say, oh, but I can see some improvement there. So a process that already is acceptable or is accepted by people, we can improve it a bit. But it will be easier for us if we propose to improve um, an activity that is felt as a critical one. People feel pain in that. Okay. Oh, yes, it's always difficult to get to know everybody because we can never meet uh, all together because we are all classes at different times. So uh, getting to know everybody is difficult or whatever. So that could be a point. It may come out from different points in the interview. So that's why we are not really interested in the specific answers to each of these questions. The question is just a, a framework for 
speaking about the different uh, activity in, in the team without asking directly. So we, we could not take this list here and ask directly, how do you do this? How do you do that? Is this a problem? Is this an issue? Does it work well or not? And so on. Because if you ask that to the, for, to the team leader, you are in a way discussing their capabilities. Does it work well? Of course. I'm managing it. It should work well or whatever. Okay? So, uh, this is the information that we need to understand, but we should extract it from a, let's say, more free uh, discussion. Okay? Even because from the discussion, we can get some new, new information, new aspects that we didn't think before. And it will be interesting. Okay? So all these interviews are for extracting information we didn't have before. Otherwise, if we already know everything, there's no point in spending time in doing this uh, observation and interviews. Okay? There are some questions that I cannot anticipate now because we didn't do any observation. Huh? So we already plan to do some observation phase uh, with uh, you know, uh, a role or playing game, a lot of playing experiments. And maybe if we do the observation, we come up with some questions to ask here that we don't, we can't imagine right now. I can't imagine right now. Because maybe I only have a limited knowledge of the domain. This is the domain, uh, the application domain, as I am thinking about it. Uh, of course, I need to try to think about it, but I'm not the real user. And so I'm thinking partially, I'm forgetting something, for sure. I'm giving too much emphasis to something that I, I care about or I, I, I imagine could be interesting, while that maybe it's not an issue at all. So one suggestion would be to, okay, start reading about the framework, but then remember that after, if you are doing the observation before the interviews, use the Sorry, the, um, the output of the observation also to improve the question that you ask. Because maybe there's, you can see some strange dynamics and you want to understand them better. Also, if you have uh, different people, so you are not uh, just probably it's a detail, but uh, you, I, you don't want to have the same people doing the interview that already did the, the, the observation. Okay, you should change. So if you have five people doing the observation and, uh, and five doing the interview, they should be different five. Hmm? And uh, possibly since we are talking about student teams, uh, one of the variability aspects would be trying to put together people of different teams. Because different teams may have different uh, managing styles, different working method. So even in the observation, I wouldn't take five people from the same team. I would probably take five people from different teams and say, okay, you, pay, you play the team leader here and you play the new entry there so that we can also see how the different experiences clash. Okay. People take, like we were discussing about habits, take for granted some habit that is normally one group, maybe it's different in another one. And so if you put together people with different, uh, say, working styles, uh, and they're doing things differently, you, they will realize it and you will realize it. And see, you see, okay, there's a point uh, that we need to, to study better because people found different solutions to this, this and let's, find, let's try to find which one is better for us hmm, to support. And the same for the interview try to find people from different teams, okay? So this is a case where the activities of the team are not formalized, are not equals. Every group sets up their own rules, and so you want to understand not just uh, uh, how it works in one specific team, but in general how it works with teams. Hmm? If there are some differences, of course, uh, it would be more difficult for us to choose what to support. 
but then it will be our choice later on. Okay. Of extracting for all this information the list of uh, tasks that we want to support. Mm -hmm. This is not something that can directly follow, let's say, from, from the answers, but we follow from a discussion that we have uh, by analyzing the answers of the observation and the interviews. So, so we'll have a lot of uh, transcripts of the, the, the interviews. Uh, uh, we have a lot of impressions. We have a lot of notes that we took during the interviews. A lot. Five pages, maybe. So we, we didn't spend days or hundreds of people. But at least we have a lot of information in our minds. And we should sit down and say, at this point, say, okay, from all this information, again, we have a limited budget. We are not building a, a very complex or overall complete, uh, complete uh, solution. We want to focus on one or two tasks that we discovered through this phase that are useful for the user, that are actually can, may solve one of the problems or may give them a solution to a problem that maybe they don't see yet. Okay, so this is the selection phase. In this phase, uh, you know, uh, it's where you are, we are turning the observation, the interview, into a design, the first step of design. Uh, in these days, uh, when we asked you about the, uh, the definition of the projects, we asked you about uh, activities. What are the activities that you want to support? The next step after the observation, need finding. You should say, okay, I found the needs of the users that they want to work on. The needs in terms of tasks, of activities, that, of tasks that you want to support. An activity is a general term, onboarding. A task is maybe the training. So it's one specific task instead of a wider activity. The activity is composed of many different uh, tasks, uh, and some of them are more interesting than others from what we got, from what we learned from the observation phase. Okay? So at the end of this, uh, you will sit together and say, okay, from all of what we learned here, what are the tasks uh, that we propose? and try to formalize them in a, in, some, in a way. That will be the high-level specification of your system. We don't speak about the system yet, because and so I mentioned the task, and task is something that is being done by the user, supported by the system, but done by the user, from, always for, still from the user point of view. Okay? I will have the user doing this, part, this specific task. Um, that's why uh, the next step, uh, the next topic we are opening is that of, it's called the, the task analysis. So how to represent the task. How, what is the output column of this? It's a list of tasks we want to support. Okay, how do we describe this task? What is, what, 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 what is a task? Okay, we are using this word, but we need to give a definition. So that we can work on that for the next stages of, of the design. Okay. In this final phase, uh, you will already, we will still, or will continue to fight with your preconceptions. Okay, when you started the project, you already have, you already, we already have something in mind. We try to set it aside when doing interviews. During the interviews, we try to be open and to follow the user opinion and don't try to lead the, the user into what you think. Okay, it's difficult, okay. Um, at the end, they should not be able to guess what you have in mind. Okay, like, uh, you know, when you have a journalist uh, and he's asking a question, making an interview, at the end of the interview, a good journalist doesn't show their own opinion, if they are from one party or the other, or what, uh, because they made questions to make the opinion of the others appear. Of course, they have uh, one opinion, they have some you know, political knowledge or uh, preference, but it shouldn't show 
through the interview. Hmm? Bad journalists uh, just only try to, to, to drive people to say what they want to appear, okay? So we, let's, let's try not to be bad uh, in journalists uh, in, in this case, right? And during the interview and also during the analysis of the interview. Okay, try, and it's difficult not to use the word I think, or I thought, or according to me, or for sure. Because that assumes that you already know the solution. We try always to extract the task that we want, the, the most important task that, that corresponds to the main suffering point or pain points of the users, try to extract them from the observation, from the interviews. Okay, even if you don't like it, you were convinced that the critical point was, uh, I don't know, uh, sharing documentation. And no user brought it up. And the user kept talking about uh, uh, knowing, knowing uh, uh, the other group, the other team members. So even if you have a very fantastic idea in mind for making a documentation repository, searchable, indexed uh, by groups and so on, if they don't care about it, don't push it. Okay? So of course this is the difficult part. Uh, we are not the uh, subjects uh, of the interview. We are not the subject of the observation. So our, our opinion doesn't count, actually, on the domain aspect. Of course, on the technology aspect, yes, it will count, because we have to make the choices when we decide the product. Hmm? Otherwise, uh, the risk is we build a, a product, a system, a prototype that we like, but they will find useless. Hmm? Okay. Um, We may add, I, I didn't put here any, uh, say, numerical question, okay? From zero to five, uh, how much do we like uh, the you know, socialization activities and so on? If you want, you can also turn that in, in this way. You can use, also use some, let's say, qualitative questions, some ranking questions. Uh, uh, it depends on how, how you want to, you know, uh, organize the, the conversation. This uh, these question examples are more for a uh, nearly free-form discussion. So I will have some point that I want to touch in the discussion, but then I will follow what the other person says. If you feel less confident, uh, you may write down some more specific questions. So maybe ask for uh, here, uh, how do you like uh, the, so the socialization activities at the beginning? One for I didn't like them at all, four for they were fantastic. So you start with a say, numerical question, I mean, an ordinal question, usually you, you ask them to rank something or to evaluate something, and then you ask uh, um, the explanation. Why did you say so? Ah, it was terrible. Why did you say so? Because they did nothing. Okay. Or it was fantastic. Why do you say so? So then. It's easier for you because you have first asked the question and then uh, you ask the, the, the explanation. And so it's easy to have a, a more, say, structured uh, discussion. But if you feel like you are able to manage an open discussion, it's also good. It's, it's your, cho your uh, choice of, of, the, of the style of the conversation, okay? The final question should always be, we already know from the, uh, what did the, what? Question didn't I ask you? So what should I ask you? What did you want? What do you want to tell me more outside of the question? So there is maybe a topic in the back of your mind that is really scratching you, uh, but you didn't have the opportunity of bringing the, uh, them up because my questions were on a different uh, part. Mm -hmm. So always give the opportunity. 
after the discussion, okay, so they already know what we are talking about, uh, what we already discussed. At the end, is there anything more you want to add? Hmm? And that's an opportunity for discovering new stuff. Maybe it goes empty. Hmm? You don't have to force them. In the other question, maybe you will try to force them to say something, even they, if they try to tell you a very short answer, maybe try to elaborate. In this one, of course, uh, no, you can force them to come up with something at all costs. Because if we try to struggle too much with, uh, with, coming, uh, for, with uh, coming out with, a, with an answer to this, it means that the issue is not so important. They just made them up something to make you happy. Okay, so as I said, after, after all of this work, that will be your work in the lab for the next two weeks, basically, of planning and executing the observations, uh, the next step will be, like we said, to formalize the task that we want to support. Okay, in our planning, we had the, uh, the first box is the what is wanted. Extracting what the user wants, and we did that uh, through the interviews, to, to the surveys, and so on. And then we need to analyze these needs in order to come up uh, with some specific uh, scenario, with some specific tasks uh, that we want to support. Okay, we cannot, the, 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 the real world is very diverse, it's very wild, uh, everybody does the same things in a different way. Okay, it's nice. And we want to learn how it works, how the real world really works. But then if we want to come up to designing something, of course, we must set some rules. Okay, you cannot do whatever you want. You must follow some, I will support some scenarios, I will support only some activities in a given way. Hmm? So, uh, the task analysis is uh, a technique that will help us uh, to structure the, uh, some subsets of activities uh, in a way that can be then designed and implemented into a system. Okay. Here we have, we discovered what the user needs. Now we are trying, starting to design how we propose that the user will solve this problem, will tackle this problem, thanks to our project, our system. We still don't, uh, we still are not designing the system. The design is here, okay? We still think about how the user will do a specific task, and of course, that will be the, the requirements uh, for the system specification, not yet the specification. Okay. Um, We know the goals, what the user wants, and we need to structure this knowledge. You know, after all the interviews, all the discussion was all very qualitative, all very informal. We reason about that, and we need to uh, say, describe it in a more structured, more precise way. Because at the end, uh, we should decide which functionalities should be in the user interface. And how to organize this information. Okay, so we are in the middle here. Very general user-driven needs and very specific uh, details uh, about uh, the interface that we want to build. In the middle, we have the task analysis steps uh, where it can be more explicit uh, or it can be more, say, uh, less, uh, you don't need to, maybe in some, in some cases you we are required to write, uh, say, uh, to detail all the tasks, in some other cases, just uh, think about them, say, uh, depending on the process you have. 
but here you see there is a, a big gap between the what and uh, the functionality and the gap is filled by the how. Huh? Task analysis uh, is try to represent uh, the way people perform parts of their jobs. So imagine the activities, we, were, we broke down the activities in different areas. Maybe uh, after the observation, after the interviews, we understood that some areas are more important than others, some are not relevant, some are new, okay? And uh, in a given area, so let's restrict not to all the activity, the onboarding activity, but to some specific part, I don't know, training, to make it easy. Uh, what they do about in training, huh? what uh, interfaces, objects, uh, things uh, they use, uh, what was the knowledge needed for performing this activity, uh, especially what they do. So what are the actual steps uh, that uh, the user will take uh, in training, if, if this was our example. This question may be about what they are currently doing, if we want to formalize the current process, or what they will do in our design. So what we are planning to do that. And uh, um, an example, okay, out of, uh, out of user interfaces is uh, if you want to clean the out with the vacuum cleaner, you have a set of steps to follow, okay? Uh, get the vacuum cleaner and uh, mount all the possible uh, accessories that you need for the task. And then finally, you have the cleaning activity. And if you need, you can empty the bag uh, and put it away at the end. Okay? So there's a sequence of steps that from the point of view of the user, they only compose one, they compose one important task, cleaning. But when we talk about cleaning, we talk about a structural activity made of different steps. Okay, so maybe from the need finding phase, we understood that cleaning is an important task. And so we ask ourselves how we do that. What are the steps for doing the cleaning? And just imagine that the goal here or the task is important for the user. Each of the individual steps are not important by themselves. There are just steps. A task is something that creates value to a user. A single step of a task just, uh, you know, getting a vacuum cleaner doesn't give you any sense of satisfaction. If you have it there, the task of cleaning is not complete, uh, and you have one more mess into your uh, living room because you have the vac vacuum cleaner there, which is standing in your way. Hmm? So it's worse <laughs> than... So uh, um, at the level of, of detail that we are discussing, we are trying to break down the user needs uh, into tasks that are independent from each other and the, um, create a value to the user. And of course, these tasks, not, uh, none of the real tasks uh, are atomic ones, okay? They all usually need a sequence of steps to be performed. Even basic steps like I write a message to my friend I have to pick up the phone, open the application, find the friend, write the message, and wait until the blue uh, check uh, appears so that uh, they have read it. We, we don't think about it, but these are a sequence of activities. The actual step of uh, taking my phone from, where is it? I, I didn't, you don't say, okay, now, I open the chat application. No. You open it because you want to write a message. And so one of the steps, of course, will be to write, uh, to open the application. You open it because you want, you know, to lose some time 
reading messages uh, and browsing stories or whatever. So that's the, w the reason why you open it. And if you want to browse the user stories, you open the application, you go to the specific section, and you know why you're doing that. Okay? So uh, a task is a set of activity, a, a sequence of steps, let's say, that when completed, give some value to the user. Uh, the must know part is that the users uh, must have some previous knowledge in order to be able to execute a task. Okay, a task could be also seen as the, the instruction for performing that sequence of steps, but you must be able to understand these instructions. Okay, so may something, sometimes it may happen that you have an interface where it's clear that you have to go through five steps, but you don't understand what you are asked to do in each of the steps. They're asking strange questions, or we, we thought about uh, the, having the right mental model, having the right language for the user. So a task, by definition, is something that the user cares about. I want to enroll in computer engineering, right. Enrolling is a very long and painful process. Okay, the most painful part is the payment, of course, but there are also uh, uh, several you know, obstacles in, the, in between about understanding what do, what do I need to do next, okay? One of the most common questions in the, in the chat of the computer engineering is, I did this and this and this and that. Is that all? Do I need to do anything more? Am I finished? Okay. Because, uh, you know, you have some steps you don't really fully understand what they are for. Hmm? And, and so this means that uh, the, the procedure is not well designed because it requires from the user some knowledge they don't have. So we should try to, to avoid that, or at least to make explicit which is the previous knowledge that we require, and so that we can check whether the user has this knowledge, and so we are okay, or if they don't, maybe we change the procedure, or maybe we train the users. We ensure that they know some stuff, so maybe in the interface we should try to be more explicit about the steps and say, okay, you are done. Okay, three words. Um, okay, okay, this is a, and another example here of uh, connecting, uh, you know, the projector to, to the room when you have to give a lecture. Okay. I can do that every time because I know how this equipment is working. If I had to go to another lecture hall or to another university, it would probably take me some time. And uh, to understand how it's working, what are the steps. And probably I can discover the procedure if I know what I'm trying to do, if I know what the HTML cable is for. If you know how the audio signal for the microphone travels and so on. So I have some knowledge. Some colleagues uh, may come from you know, a different background, don't understand actually what they're doing, and so they follow the procedure blindly. And if you follow a procedure without really understanding what uh, uh, you know, step five is, then whenever you change even a little bit of detail, you change room and so the cables are not the same color uh, as the previous one, they are lost. Okay, so uh, it's not just the procedural knowledge. I do a sequence of steps without understanding them, but I know that at the end it will work. In most of human activities, we should be more flexible. So being ensuring that the users know what they are doing the different steps. It's not always easy. Okay. It's not always easy. If you see here, there are you know, a, a tangle of cables, and you need to know which one to pick. Fortunately, not all of them enter into every connector. 
So there are some physical constraints, uh, but they are not enough. So uh, in our in designing our tasks, that will be the tasks that the system will support, we should always try to uh, be sure and to write down, to be explicit about uh, the user knowledge at the stage. Hmm? And design the task accordingly. Um, slide, last slide for today is uh, some um, terminology. We start from the goal that we want to support, the need of the user, and uh, uh, the system wishes to achieve some, some goal. We decompose the goal into one or more tasks, and tasks are atomic and independent. Um, in uh, agile programming and agile software engineering, they call it more user stories, for example, or use cases in traditional software engineering. You know, so they're not exactly the same thing, but you, you get the idea. Um, Self-contained uh, functionality of the system. That are organized into a sequence of, of individual actions. What I called before the steps uh, in step analysis, they are uh, often called action. Okay. So an action is a single step that the user will take uh, for performing a task. And this task uh, will help him or her to reach uh, some high level goal that they wish to do. Mm -hmm. A task is a, the definition here is uh, now we can understand the single line definition. A task is a goal with some order set of actions. So, what do we want to do? And what are the steps, uh, the actions uh, in the, in the in a order set that they need to accomplish to reach this goal? Okay, of course, the same goal may be implemented in totally different ways. So the goal comes from the need finding. The task, which is the way in which the user reach, uh, reaches the goal, is our design. It's already part of our design. So we are designing the tasks for allowing the user to reach their goals. Okay. Okay. So next time we'll uh, dig into one possible representation of uh, of these tasks uh, in order to be able to, to 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 draw them and to reason about them and to optimize them, reorganize them, starting maybe from how the user is doing things today to how we want them uh, to to support them uh, differently with our system. Okay. So thank you for today.